Hi everyone, today I want to make a quick, hopefully it'll be a quick video on uh, introducing a new series uh, that will be a year long series where I look back at the films of 1973. So for followers of my channel, you know that last year I did the films of 1972. It was sort of a continuation. I did 50 films from 1972, 50 years ago. I don't know if I'm going to do 50 uh, this year, but because uh, I have so many other series I want to do, but I'll do quite a few. Um, <clears throat> and I wasn't going to do it uh, until I looked at the, the list of films. Uh, somebody asked me uh, a few videos back, I mentioned my notebook, and asked me if I would show what my notebook looked like, which is basically a journal of a disheveled mind. <laughs> So I, like this is my list of 1973 movies and I did all kinds of research on, on uh, how, um, where I could find them streaming and uh, if they were available on Blu-ray, how much money they would cost. And my, <clears throat> my notebook is basically, there's nothing much of interest in it. It's just full of uh, ideas and movies that I might want to uh, pick up and uh, it, it's like I say it's a disheveled <laughs> a disheveled notebook um, <clears throat> but I did do a lot of research in 73 and some of the interesting things about the year uh, is there was a lot of high profile movies far more in 73 than 72 which was dominated by the Godfather in 73 at the box office um, The Exorcist was the number one film but not by much over the sting followed by American Graffiti, Papillon, and The Way We Were. No Disney movies at the top 10 box office. At the Academy Awards, The Sting was the big winner. It won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, uh, Best Director for George Roy Hill, uh, Jack Lemmon won for Save the Tiger for Best Actor, Glenda Jackson won Best Actress for A Touch of Class. This was a surprise, I didn't remember this one. John Houseman won Best Supporting Actor for The Paper Chase. Tatum O'Neill won Best Supporting Actress for Paper Moon, and I believe at the time she was the youngest um, actor to ever win an Academy Award. Uh, Day for Night won the Best Foreign Film, and I believe it pretty much dominated the, the various critics' awards uh, for the films of 73. Now, in the recent Sight and Sound uh, November 2022 list, there were two movies from uh, 73 on the critics list. <clears throat> that was Tuki Buki, a Senegal movie from Diop Mambeto, and Spirit of the Beehive, uh, which was directed by Victor Aris and uh, from Spain. I have not seen either of those two films, though they are, they are playing on the Criterion Channel and they are in the Criterion Collection. Now on the director's poll, uh, their top 100, both of those films were in the top 100 but they included a third one, and this was Nicholas Rogue's Don't Look Now with uh, Julie Christie and Donald Sutherland and Don, Donald Sutherland's killer wig. Uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, this is an indication uh, that um, Don't Look Now is, which was a moderate hit in, in 1973, but, uh, and, and got some critical acclaim probably notorious at the time for the sex scene between Sutherland and, and Julie Christie. But I think it's pretty much uh, eclipsed the other films, at least the com of, in commercial cinema, uh, as the film that people remember the, the most fondly and, and look back to and, and watch over and over again. I know I've seen Don't Look Now probably half a dozen times. Now I've already, <coughs> excuse me, I've already seen five films, I, or I, I made videos of five films from 1972 in the past two years, so after I post this introduction, I will create a playlist. I'll add those five films uh, to the playlist and then add the films as, as we go along. As always, 50 years ago, there was going to be a lot of films not available on Blu-ray or available streaming, at least in the, at, in the major streaming uh, services the films of 73. Uh, I, I, um, uh, I, I researched pretty deeply to see if I could find them, uh, some of these, but the two uh, glaring omissions, one of them would be The Emperor of the North Pole. And this is a Robert Aldridge directed movie with Lee Marvin and Ernest Borgnine, where uh, Marvin is a hobo and, and uh, uh, 
uh, Borg 9 is the Emperor of the North Pole and they have a fight. He, he works for the train uh, company and they have a monumental fight on a moving train <laughs> and I've never forgotten. I don't think I've seen it since 1973. Huh? And uh, that's kind of surprising that it's not on, it, it's not on Blu-ray. It may have been DVDs. Some of the films from 73 have out of print DVDs uh, that uh, because there's no Blu-ray <laughs> are fairly uh, uh, pricey. And then the other film is, a, if you're interested in international cinema, The Mother and the Whore by Jeannie Eustache. Now, Jeannie Eustache was, uh, he died in the late 70s, but his films have been out of circulation for decades. His estate, for some reason, has, has not allowed them to be restored or exhibited. Uh, and, uh, but late th this past year, they decided that, uh, to allow them for the first time in decades to be uh, restored, they're, they're, they will be playing, there's only a handful of his, he died fairly young, there's only a handful of his films, but they will be playing throughout the, the U.S. and major cities. Uh, the Mother and the Whore, and, and, and also Criterion uh, uh, reportedly has the, um, has the uh, rights to, to, the, uh, uh, to these Junior Stash films. Um, so uh, hopefully we'll get a um, we'll get a Blu-ray of the Mother and the Whore hopefully this year. It, it was a, it was a film that I was in my 20s and, and when you're in your 20s you can be really impacted by movies. I can still remember seeing this. It was at the TLA Theater, South Street, Philadelphia, it's a Bohemian section TLA Theater was a great repertory theater. I saw so many films there. I think it's still in existence. It might be a uh, music venue nowadays, but uh, they made it. It's a three hour plus movie. Jean-Pierre Liu, Bernadette Lafont. Uh, I can't remember the other actress's name, uh, but it made a great impression on me. I remember walking back to the high speed line, the subway system that brought me home in the rain, <laughs> but I was totally oblivious to it. It had, it had made such an impact on me. Now, uh, I'm going to start out with um, the big movie, the, <laughs> as far as the Academy Awards go. That's The Sting. I'll have a video on that uh, uh, pr uh, pretty quick. Uh, uh, Paul Newman and, uh, and Robert Redford reprising their uh, bromance from Bruce Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And I'm going to go with Day of the Jackal in this first section. This is uh, this first series of 73 films uh, directed by Fred Zinnemann, a based on a uh, novel uh, thriller by Frederick Forsyth, uh, assassination at, uh, uh, attempt on, uh, on Charles de Gaulle. I also have uh, High Plains Drifter on 4K coming. Uh, so The Sting was 4K, High Plains Drifter is coming. Uh, I think it'll be here today or tomorrow, and that's also on 4K. And then I'm also going to cover in this uh, first series, Badlands, and this is Terry Malick's uh, debut film with Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek, a film that I, that I uh, was totally perplexed by in 1973, a sort of deadpan tone uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a killing spree in the Midwest USA. As far as 4Ks go, as I said, I have, uh, I have The Sting in 4K, I have uh, High Plains Drifter coming. The Way We Were, I think, has just recently been released on 4K. Uh, the Five Days uh, from Dario Argento. Uh, the Last Detail, I think, is out on 4K. Surf Go is coming uh, either in February or March, I think. Um, and uh, Magnum Force, I, I, I haven't seen any um, any uh, word on a 4K of Magnum Force uh, being an Eastwood film, the sequel to Dirty Harry, you would think that would be coming. But the big, uh, the big missing 4K for 70, uh, from 1973 would definitely have to be The Exorcist. Uh, I thought it was announced, but I, I did a, a quick check early this morning and I, I haven't seen anything, uh, um, I haven't seen anything definite that it's coming out this year in 4K. You would think that would be a no-brainer, but it is directed by William Friedkin, and I know Friedkin is a little bit, uh, uh, he's, a, he, he's a little bit strange as far as his, uh, his films go coming to physical media. Um, what was life like, for, for me at least, in the United States? I was still a, 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 
an addict film goer. Um, the political situation was very, very interesting. <clears throat> we were basically at the end of a, the tail end of a very turbulent 10 years. The Vietnam War had just torn the country apart. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, but it was on the, the end was in sight. We were still doing a lot of bombing, uh, but the ground troops, there were very few uh, American casualties in, in the war in 73. <clears throat> And, but, and, and President Nixon got a big, uh, had a big landslide in November to, uh, of 72, but he, <laughs> his, his administration, his presidency was unraveling day by day in 1973 with the Watergate investigation. So uh, people were riveted to the Watergate hearings. Uh, we were still in the Cold War. This was a very big deal. Uh, his Vice President Spiro Agnew had to resign for his corruption in uh, uh, during his days as a politician in Maryland. <clears throat> so the traumas of the previous 10 years were not over yet. This was sort of like, you know, the last act <laughs> of, of that era. Does any of this relate to the films of 1973, at least as Hollywood goes? <laughs> not, I, I couldn't find hardly anything that has anything to do with what the world, what America was like in the, uh, 72 to 73 or the previous 10 years. It was all escapism, just about. I, I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna find some films in there that might actually relate to what life was like, but people, people were tired of watching all this traumatic stuff on, t on television, so when they went to the theater, they wanted escapism. And it looks from, the, from this list that there's a lot of good entertaining movies from 1973. Okay, thanks a lot for everybody listening. I do appreciate it. Again, I'll be making a playlist. The Sting will be my first video. Take care.